What's up you guys, today we're going to be looking at the Harley Benton Thunderbird 70 Satin Black. So this thing right here. We're going to be looking at this beauty right here. I don't know, get a good look, get a good look, get a good look. What can we say about it? Well, let's compare it first, I think, which is what everyone's going to be comparing it to anyway. It's the uh, Epiphone Thunderbird and the Gibson Thunderbird. So with the Epiphone Thunderbird, uh, we're looking at about what, $400, $500? Gibson, we're looking at about $2,000. Uh, with the Harley Benton, we're looking at about 200 bucks. And uh, just full disclaimer, I paid for this for myself. I bought it on a Friday and it came over to my house on a Tuesday. So two day shipping, right? Saturday, Sunday doesn't count, right? So really fast. I thought it was gonna take like a week or more because it was coming from overseas, but it was almost like Amazon shipping. I was like, whoa. Um, so yeah, for 200 bucks, you can check out and see if you're gonna like the Thunderbird style, because let me tell you right now, I come from a you know precision bass, uh, Ibanez, you know Rickenbacker, more of that line of playing, and that feels more straight, right? It feels more normal. The Thunderbird is a completely different beast altogether. I mean, when I was first playing this thing, what I noticed was I was reaching a lot farther out to get to the first you know three frets notes. Um, I almost felt like Adam, you know, reaching to God, like that, you know, that picture, it, it was um, different. It was definitely not something I was used to. So I've had it for about a month, two months now, and I can say that I've gotten used to it and, and I like the feel of it now. Um, but that is something to take note is that initially when you're going to play a Thunderbird, it's going to be very, very different. But don't worry, you'll get used to it. <laughs> and so with Harley Benton's version of the Thunderbird, it's almost a carbon copy of an Epiphone or a Gibson. The only difference being, I don't know if you can notice, is that horn, right? This thing right here. That's really the only difference. And I kind of like it a lot better than the, you know, regular Thunderbirds. I feel, always felt like the regular Thunderbirds. I like the look, but I do kind of think that it looks like someone chewed a piece of bubble gum and just splatted it on a wall or something. This makes it look like they cross-pollinated an Explorer and a Thunderbird, which I think it makes it look even more badass than it already looks. The body, what can we say about the body? Well, body and neck is mahogany. Neck through, right? It might be just a single piece of wood. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but it might be just a single piece of wood. Number one, the large. The neck itself, the fretboard I should say, um, is this thing called, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Roesser, Roesser? Basically, it's thermally treated maple. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what that means, I don't either. Um, take, technically, what they're trying to do is they're trying to replicate rosewood. But it's a cheaper material. So, that's something to take into consideration. I mean, you're not getting a maple neck. You're not getting a rosewood neck. It's a rosier, you know, which it's basically supposed to mimic rosewood. I think it plays nice. I think it feels nice. Um, can't complain too much about that. Um, as far as pickups go, we're looking at their in-house brand uh, Roswell GB4s, I believe. Um, I think they sound good. I think they're decent. On um, the strings, right? And the strings on here, I'm actually using... I switched out the ones that it came with, uh, with uh, Black Beauties. Um, I actually... <laughs> didn't want black strings initially because I kind of like the contrast of the black and silver. I kind of like that contrast, but I was like, well, you know, it's all black. So I might as well, you know, give it a, give it a shot. You know, if you're into goth music, which I am. So I was like, you know, let's, let's go for it. But I do think that the silver contrasts with it a lot better, but can't complain too much about it. Um, speaking about the strings, uh, I think as soon as I put them on here, I was like, oh my goodness, this thing plays like butter. Um, so yeah, the strings are awesome and on this bass they, they sound great. The only complaint I do have about the strings is, I don't know, it's, it's something to do with the coating. So if you slide a lot, like, like that, I already felt it, it burns a lot faster. I felt like with nickel and other, you know, silver looking strings, you can slide all day and you won't feel that burn. But for whatever reason on these black beauties, if you slide, you feel it initially, like instantly, a burn. Uh, that's my only complaint with that. As far as the tuners go, they're just generic. No name. Generic, 
right? Um, and at first, when I was tuning it, I noticed that it, you, know, you know that feeling of when righty become righty tighty becomes lefty loosey. You know, you're turning, turning, and oh crap, right? That's how it initially felt. Like it was weird because you're tightening it, and then it slips a little bit. And I didn't like that too much, so I, I kind of messed with the tuners a little bit, tightened them up, loosened them, and, and just just messed with them until it got rid of that issue. And I did um, just mess with the tuners a little bit. There, there's little um, you know, screwdriver screws there, so you can mess with. Um, of course, we got to talk about the three controls. We're looking at volume, we're looking at the, the neck, and we're looking at the bridge, um, and it's push-pull. I don't know if you can hear that, <laughs> hopefully you can. But it's push-pull, so it has a little bit of uh, EQing that you can do, courtesy to the active pickups, right? So no battery, no play. Um, I think that's pretty cool though, that at this price point that you're able to get that opportunity to EQ on the guitar itself. Now with that said, the neck pickup, and I think this is natural, it should be this way anyway, but the neck pickup is a lot lower. So the neck pickup being this one, um, is a lot lower than the bridge pickup. And so if you pull on this, um, or I might've said that backwards, but anyway, so if you pull on this, this pickup, the bridge is about two or three decibels louder than the neck. And when you press down on it, it's 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 such a jarring sh uh, shift that you're like, whoa, like what's going on there? Um, I noticed it initially when playing, but I noticed a lot more when I went into or when I go into record. Um, it's about a two to three decibel difference. Um, I don't know if that's going to be an issue for anybody, but for me, I was like, ah, I could deal with it. You know, it's just turning it down or turning it up anytime you're, you know, engaging or disengaging, whatever, right? Um, but that was one thing I did notice. Another thing I did notice was um, on the back, when I opened the hardware back there, <sighs> Harley Benton, come on, you could do a little better there. <laughs> I opened it and it looked like a bomb went off in there. Um, I've, you know, I've messed with other guitars and it, most don't look that bad, even at cheap price points. Um, I mean, it was just scattered mess. I didn't know like what was what until I like really started moving stuff around and it's so fragile that I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, for 200 bucks, the components, you can't expect high-end components, you know, come on. We gotta be a little realistic, but at the same time, it's like, they, I think they could do a little bit better back there. Um, now, the reason I started talking about the components back there is because um, when I went into the record, I already talked about the volume being a lot lower at the neck than it is at the bridge, but I also noticed that when you're at the bridge, the treble, there's a lot of interference coming in. And so I, if I turn the bass away from the computer, the interference would die out completely. If I turned it towards the computer, it would just like pick up tons. 
Um, so that's another thing to look out for. And I think a fix for that could be, you know, adding copper to the electronics back here um, and even to the pickups themselves. That might be something I might do, but um, just something to look out for. Um, I mean, if you haven't noticed already, it's, it's satin black. I, I think I probably mentioned that a few times and, and it's made out of a, a turtle butt over here. So they like literally took a turtle and ripped out its so yeah, so um, when comparing it to a Thunderbird, right, whether it's an Epiphone or a Gibson, similarities being the weight. It's it's very similar in weight. Um, it's a hefty mother, man. It's it's not a light instrument at all, you know. Um, playing while sitting down, I already mentioned, so you know you feel like you're reaching a lot farther. But after about, I feel like after about a month, I got used to it. Playing standing up, it feels great. You know, you can pretend like you're Twiggy from Manson or, or Chris from Nirvana or maybe even uh, Nikki Six from uh, Motley. Um, I don't know if you played it really low, but I know those other guys played it really low. And if you get a long strap, you could really replicate that look. And it, it feels nice, you know, to play like that. I'm, I'm more of a, you know, I play more up here, right? But that style, I think it looks cool and it feels cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the Thunderbird style is definitely something that takes a little bit of getting used to. I like it now. Initially, I was like, uh, but but yeah, um, keep with it and, and you'll definitely get used to it. And anything else that I could add? I mean, we're dealing with a satin, a matte guitar. So fingerprints, I don't know if, let's see, let's see if they'll come up. Uh, I can't tell, but um, fingerprints uh, do become an issue. And, you know, if you're playing... For example, right, there's um, exposed skin right there. And so if I'm playing like this, after, you know, a couple of, uh, I don't know, a couple months or years or whatever, um, that will begin to give it a little sheen. And so I definitely recommend a product. Um, I don't know what it's called. I'll put it in the description. Um, but it's for, for matte satin guitars. You just, you basically just spray a little bit on a, onto a, you know, microfiber towel and just, you know, wipe away the, the oils and, and yeah, that's what I've been doing to kind of prevent that shiny look, which I've had matte guitars before and me, you know, it's gonna happen. It's, it's inevitable, right? Uh, so I don't, I don't mind too much. Um, yeah, the strings, the strings that it came with it died out on me about three weeks in. So uh, yeah, replace those as soon as you can. What else can I say about this thing? I mean, really, I mean, you're looking at a Thunderbird at 200 bucks. I think it's worth, you know, if you're, if you've ever been interested, like, I mean, you know, I don't know about those Thunderbirds, you know, you can pick it up. I think it's a lot more convenient than buying an Epiphone or a Gibson. I mean, you're going to be spending $2,000 or $400, $500, right? Um, to be like, you know what, that, that Thunderbird's not for me. And then you end up, you know, turning it, but it's like, oh, we're out of the return, whatever, right? So. 200 bucks, you can't go wrong. I took a gamble, ga I took a gamble with it and I ended up really liking it. And another thing to note is that there's two versions of this bass. So you can get, you know, the satin black one or you can get the uh, like tobacco burst version, which that one looks more like, like super 60s, super 70s. Um, really old school looking, really nice, really pretty. Um, I went for this one though, cause this one just came out in September of last year, 2020. Um, so it's a fairly new beast, right? Um, and yeah, just, I mean, I just think it looks gorgeous. I mean, it just fits my goth aesthetic, you know, that I peruse from time to time, you know, and can't go wrong with it. I, I, I mean, I, I don't think overall, you know, you're getting a carbon copy. I mean, even up to the three point bridge. I mean, and I've heard things about the three point bridge and personally, I'm an industrialist. I like using my hands. I like, you know, messing with things. It feels like working on a car. I mean, I can't complain too much. I mean, some stuff that I did to it is I mess with the truss rod and, you know, to get rid of the buzz, you know, at the top end. And then I mess with the bridge to get rid of the bus at, at the lower end. And I didn't really have too much trouble messing with the three-point bridge and apparently it's like oh it's bleh, right but i don't know i i can't complain too much about it um i'm handy so i can't i can't complain too much about it other than that there's really not much to add man i mean there's, there's really not much um 
you know, the trust rod's up here. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of as much things I could muster up before call it a review. Yeah, I, I would say overall it's worth it though. 200 bucks, you know, you, you could get it in like two, three days from what is it, like Germany or whatever? Thomain or whatever, Thawman, their, their website. Um, cool stuff. The Harley Benton Thunderbird 70 in satin black. Give it a shot. I think it was worth it. You might like it. And then, yeah, and, that, and that's that. You know, this is Cabersai. If you learned anything, think about liking, subscribing. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.